to this first video on how to use Excel for administrative tasks. Uh, during this series of videos, we I am going to take you through some nice to know um, features in Excel so that you can use it for something else than uh, just uh, doing economics. Um, so. Uh, first thing is uh, we need some kind of a sheet uh, that we can use uh, for um, uh, uh, trying out these different features. Um, so we will start by uh, uh, naming this um, this sheet something. We'll do something, uh, let's say a task manager. Um, um, and uh, also it's uh, along the way it's uh, going to be, uh, we're going to need to um, have some different columns. Uh, we we'll need to have some kind of numbering. Uh, so we'll put in here a sign for, for number. Uh, and we will need to know category. Um, there might be a use for a description of what's going on, what task it is. Uh, uh, or who is responsible for the task? A status. We will need to know if uh, the task has been identified. If it is in progress. Uh, or if it's been completed. Also, we would need to know when it started, what the deadline is, and the completion date. Now, <clears throat> these um, categories uh, or columns need to be adjusted because we can't see all up here uh, and get and the cursor changes to look like this and I can push my left um, mouse button and I can rearrange the size of um, of the columns adjust them to what I how I would like them to be this one just needs to be this it needs to be a little bit bigger. And we have some three columns here that needs to be the same length, so I mark all of them. Then I get the cursor like this. And I move it so it fits. And then all three has the same length. Um, the same would go for these. Like this. Okay. Now I would like for all of this to be... Um, in some kind of frame. So let's just do it this, make it this size here in the beginning. I'll frame all of them. Like this, all borders. So, um, and then I would like for the headlines and also I, uh, I can mark more. I'd like for these to be this, uh, the same color. So I press the control button. And I mark down here as well. Now I like the filling of these to change, so I can push up here. Um, let's just make them blue. But now it's hard to see the writing in them, so I'll change the writing as well to be white. Okay, and for this column here, I'd like for it to be centered. I'll do I do that by clicking this button. <coughs> um, now I basically have my frame. <coughs> But it can be with all the borders and all the grid lines, it can be hard to see. It's not vis visibly that easy to, to look at. So I click on the view button here and I remove my grid lines. Okay, back home. And then I'd like the headline to be a little bit bigger and be bolded and bigger. Here, like this. So, another li nice thing to see, to know is when is uh, today's date. Um, so I do that by. Uh, Stating uh, date of today, 
and I'd like for this to be right centered. And over here, I can put uh, foam equals today, and then parentheses and parentheses, and sure. And I have today's date, but I don't want it to be here. I want it to be closer to the headline. Maybe this should have a different coloring. So I will make this uh, blue. Maybe even bolded. Yeah, like this. Okay, so <clears throat> now I've made my done the uh, basics on making something that's uh, nice to look at. Uh, at the same time, I know that later on I'm going to do something special for this column right here. I'm going to do something special for the uh, this column right here, uh, column right here, and for the columns all the way to here. Uh, they're not they're columns that will get their data from elsewhere, so I'm not typing in them directly. Uh, therefore, I'd like to headline them or make them a little bit different. Uh, again, to to mark more than to have a gap between. If I just hit the the shift button and start marking here, uh, it does like this. So I want to have a gap in between. So I hit the control button, and then I can mark this one. I can mark these right here. I like for them to be a different color, maybe a light blue. But the status button or column is a column where I'm going to do something different again. So I'll, this one, I'll give a little different color and do it like this. Okay. Um, also, I would like to be able to, because these three columns here are, are columns that I'm going to use to calculate something, but I'm, I don't need to look at them uh, once I'm finished. So I'll, I want to be able to collapse them, to hide them. I do that by marking the, uh, the columns, and I click on data, and then I click on group, the group button here. That allows me to uh, make them disappear. So now I get this feature up here. You see a one and a two over here. If I click on the minus, they collapse. I only see what I want to see. And I click here, it opens again. Also here, I can click on, on uh, one, it collapses, and on two, and it opens. So uh, this, for now, I'll just leave it open because I need to fill in some forms in them. Um, but later on, I, uh, I would need to uh, make them collapse. Um, also, you probably notice that now I can't see everything down here. And I'd like to be able, and if I scroll down, um, if I scroll down here, it sort of disappears and I can't see. So if, if, let's say I use this for a lot of tasks or a list of employees, and I have many, let's say 200 employees, I lose track of who I'm dealing with. And also if I scroll sidewards, I lose track of who it is, what, what I'm, what it, who I'm looking at numbers for. So I'd like to be able to keep this row and everything above it at all times. Also, these are essential information. So the category, who's responsible, and the status of it. I'd like to keep that intact as well. So I put myself here, and I make sure I'm in uh, in the view menu up here, and then I click on freeze panes. What this does is that it freezes everything on top of where I am and to the left of where I am. And if I want, so now I can I can simply just scroll up, and I can scroll sideways, and it stays there. And if I want it to uh, I want to, to ch want this to, to be removed again. I just click on it and unfreeze uh, paints. So for now, we'll freeze the paints. Okay. So this and and the the last thing we're going to go through here is if I want, I always keep a blank row at the bottom because if I want to add more rows and I want my forms to be intact, I simply just locate myself in the black row at the bottom, and then I click on insert here sorry on home and I go to the insert key here uh, and then instead of inserting cells I insert a row and then it inserts an entire row uh, and the one I was standing moved down so now I have a different one if I want to get rid if I want to insert more I simply just highlight two insert rows and it inserts two rows so now there's two additional rows and then if I want to delete some I do it here and uh, let's just delete four rows so we can see everything. Click on delete and delete rows. So this way I can make sure that everything is intact. 
all the forms are stayed intact. And if I, let's say I create something out here um, to the right of my table, and I don't want the insert, insertion of rows to interfere with that, I simply just mark here and then where I want something and then insert and insert cells and then uh, shift cells down and then I click and it's only there and I can delete it as well in the same way delete cells and shift cells up boom and they're up okay so that's how I insert and I can do the same for columns if I want a column to come in but we can talk about that later on okay guys this was uh, the first part of this series of uh, Excel videos. So I hope uh, you'll stay on and uh, uh, continue on the other videos uh, since we're uh, going to start working with the content of this table. Then. Okay, have a good day.